Telefunken Kid, Par 199-1959. This video is informational and not entertaining. This table of contents could guide you through the available topics. This radio was found in Italy, donated by a friend who received it from another friend. It must have been used a lot, and the dial scale seems scratched on purpose, probably to remember the location of two important radio stations. This model was manufactured in Italy, around 1959, designed to be very cheap. In particular, instead of a variable capacitor, it uses two variable inductors, moved in synchrony through a dedicated cord, connected to the dial pulley. The electrical part of the radio is built mostly on a printed circuit board, but the high-frequency components coils, trimmer capacitors and band switch, are mounted on a metal frame and are built in place, without using a separable module. The radio has a power auto transformer, and the chassis is always hot, as long as the power plug is connected to the mains. The radio seems to be intact and never serviced before. This is the original schematic diagram, found online at umberto-alessio.it, with additional annotations to guide the interpretation. This is a rewritten and simplified schematic diagram, where, instead of the band switch, the different components involved in each band are annotated as if they were separable modules. This radio uses an unusual potentimeter. R16, with two wipers on the same resistance element. One wiper is used to fetch the signal for the pre-amplifier section, while the other side is used for the tone control. There is also a negative feedback connection between the tone control section and the loudspeaker, to reduce the hum generated by the audio section. The audio transformer, T3, has a primary winding with an intermediate connection, L, so that the DC current feeding the final amplifier tube, terminal K, goes in the opposite direction compared to the current feeding the other tube anodes, terminal M. This is done with the purpose of cancelling the hum present in the B-plus line, after the rectifier tube. This radio contains three hybrid modules, one of them appears to have a single component out of value. The faulty hybrid module is removed and replaced with equivalent discrete components. After the faulty hybrid has been replaced, the paper and electrolytic capacitors are also replaced. Checking one capacitor with a value that should be of 47 microfarad, a much higher value is read instead, very likely because there is a significant electrical leakage inside. The radio is finally recapped, and also the loudspeaker is now separable with the help of a spade connector. This radio uses two variable inductors in place of a variable capacitor. The cores of these variable inductors are moved with the cord attached to the same pulley that is connected to the dial cord. It is advisable to avoid tampering with the variable inductor cord, because replacing it would be very complicated. The actual dial cord could be easily replaced instead, and in this case, some fishing wire is used for the purpose. Special care should be given to the spring keeping the dial cord in tension, it is soldered to the plastic pulley and it should not be removed from the pulley itself.
The antenna connection is modified, so that a loop antenna could be attached. Two security capacitors are used, one replacing the original antenna capacitor, the other one for the connection with the chassis, to avoid exposing the operator to electrocution. There is no information available over the correct alignment for the intermediate frequency transformers, for this particular radio model. Considering that other Telefunken models of the same period were using the frequency of 468 kHz, this value has been used also for the radio under restoration. With the band selector set to the medium wave, broadcast band, and the cores of the tuning coils completely inserted, lower frequency, the signal is applied to the antenna input, and then the intermediate frequency transformers are aligned to get the maximum signal output. Special care should be taken to insulate the signal generator with capacitors, also the ground connection should be insulated, because the radio chassis is directly connected to the mains end, without insulation. That would result in a bad short circuit or in the electrocution of the operator. The intensity of the signal could be measured from the automatic volume control line, or automatic gain control line, seeking for the most negative voltage. The alignment between the tuning section and the oscillator section requires the adjustment of trimmer capacitors and inductors that are mounted on the shaft that is already holding the variable inductor couple. With the radio under restoration it appeared impossible to align the reception to the values reported on the dial scale, even trying different values for the intermediate frequency transformers, therefore, for every band. The alignment has been made only for a frequency around the middle of the scale, adjusting the components to get the maximum output signal. First of all, the broadcast band should be aligned, adjusting L4, L1, C5 and C12. For the 50 meter band, L3, C6, C8 could be adjusted. For the 25 meter band, nothing should be done. This radio model has been designed focusing on making it cheap. There is no shielding between the first three vacuum tubes, and all the coils involved in the tuning and oscillator sections are not shielded either. Under the circumstances, the radio is very sensitive to electrical noise. In the hope of obtaining a slight improvement, the first three tubes are shielded using aluminum foil, connected to the radio chassis with a tinned wire. For a better result, also the internal side of the cabinet could be shielded with aluminum foil, connected to the chassis ground, but that has not been tried in this restoration project. The radio works well with the wire antenna, but only for the 50 and 25 meter bands. For the medium wave, or broadcast band, it is necessary to use a loop antenna, to reduce the amount of noise received. This loop antenna appears to offer a good compromise between effectiveness and size, larger loop antennas would work even better. This particular loop antenna is made of 8 loops, on a diameter of about 40 cm. The corrugated pipe holding the loops comes from a broken vacuum cleaner. The base of the antenna is obtained from a large can of tuna. To connect the antenna to the radio, some TV antenna cable has been used. The following shows how the radio works during the evening, in an environment with electromagnetic noise spread on most of the broadcast band. First the reception of the broadcast is tried with an indoor wire antenna. There is no way to perceive any station.
with the loop antenna. Instead, the sensitivity of the radio is significantly reduced, but some stations could be heard. The wire antenna is used successfully with the shortwave bands, starting with the 50 meter band. The last to try is the 25 meter band, also using only an indoor wire antenna. Titles, uh, the, the candy is open to the market, we really care to not vote for the one dot, yeah. Yeah, Ray, we're talking about strikers, Sadio Mane. Uh -huh. This video comes with written documentation, available from the links appearing under the Show More tab, containing more details and better resolution pictures, compared to what the video could offer.
If you would like to contribute to this project, donating old electronics equipment or old radios, in whatever condition they might be, provided that you do not feel any attachment to that, or not anymore, that could be helpful for my next restoration documentation and video production.